Right, so hi, welcome to week three of our conditioning for brands. Um, so um, this is a collaboration between myself and the Brams team down at Southmead um, Hospital in the Brain Unit. Um, so it's for those people that have been assessed by the physiotherapy team and um, have been given kind of directions to come here and have a go at this kind of class. Um, so if you've come from elsewhere or you don't understand who I am or all those kinds of things, um, then it's probably best that you just chill out. I mean, sit down, watch if you want to and have a go, those kinds of things. But really, it's only for those that have been fully assessed down in the, in the unit. And it's a short little kind of hour long circuit based training session, a little bit of a warm up, a little bit of a cool down, those kinds of things to help develop movement patterns, to help raise the heart rate, those kinds of things during this crazy lockdown situation. Um, we've been doing something very similar over the last six months on a Friday. And now this is a little bit more class um, aimed at a slightly different um, participant area um, as well uh, within the, the, the Brams program down there. Um, if you've got any problems with anything that we're doing today, if there's any situations you don't feel comfortable with or, or um, especially challenging those kinds of things, sit them out. You don't need to worry about carrying on pushing yourselves or anything like that. This is based 100% on getting confidence through the movements rather than doing as many reps as you can do and all those kinds of things. Um, if you do have any issues though, please refer back to the physio or the nurse or the neurologist, whoever you're dealing with down at uh, Brands to, to kind of discuss it further. Um, so yes, okay. Um, uh, oh yeah, my name's Rich by the way, hi, um, if it's your first time here. All of these classes are also uploaded onto YouTube, so if you miss one, you can't do it live, those kinds of things, you can find the classes up on the YouTube account as well. And uh, one thing I'm super keen for is if you leave a comment either in the Facebook video about when you've done it, if you've not done it live, or on the YouTube channel as well, just so we know when it's being used, who's using it kind of thing, when it's being digested, those kinds of things as well. That's great. Just helps us kind of with the process of making sure we can do the best thing for yourselves from there. Okay, so today, what are you gonna need? You're gonna need a nice sturdy chair, okay? We're gonna do a lot of seat-based work today, um, a little bit of stabilizing work, those kinds of things. My recommendation 100% is to have one with arms, okay? Chair with arms, because then that means we've got things that we can push off um, we've got a little bit a higher situation there so we can kind of regress any movements that we need to a little bit further. Maybe you want a bit of a juice, a little bit of a drink, water, fluid, something along those lines that's going to, you know, help cool the body down if we get warm and those kinds of things. You may want a towel to wipe away any sweat, but you also, on top of that, you are going to need a massive amount of space around you. You don't want to be kind of having any kids or animals running around under your feet when you're trying to get your working, all those kinds of things. So make sure you've got a nice little bit of space around you as well. Um, you may want to put some tunes on, get some nice music going in the background, those kinds of things, get a nice relaxed rhythm going to help support you, all those kinds of things. So if you want something like that, pop that on as well. Um, Today, the kind of things that we're going to be doing, they are mostly based on kind of pushing your muscular structure, okay? So a little bit of minor discomfort uh, in and around the muscles is, is probably about as much as we want to be feeling today. Anything more than that, then I really recommend kind of dialing it back a little bit from there. Um, especially if you feel any kind of um, discomfort in the joints, so in your knees, elbows, wrists, those kinds of things. Those are big signs that something's happening that it shouldn't be. Um, whenever the muscles aren't firing, whenever the muscles aren't being used for work, that's when you start to feel that extra stress on the joints and those kinds of things. We're not looking for that at all. We're looking to make sure the muscles are involved with each and every one. Um, another recommendation is, is just doing the best you can do today with how you feel. Don't reference what I'm doing in regards to kind of full range of motions or anything like that. Don't reference what you could do last week or the week before and those kinds of things. It's really a, how are we feeling today? Let's do as much as we can do today as well. And then when we talk about as much as you can do, it's not as many reps as you can do in the time, it's as many perfect reps as you can do in that time. So during the 45 seconds worth of work, if you can only do one, two repetitions, 
That's great. That's all we're looking for today. Perfect repetitions beat many repetitions for sure. We're looking to develop the brain to muscle connection rather than anything else. Um, so with that being said, let's uh, get a little bit of a warm up done. Let me make sure that I have got everything set up fine. Make sure I know what programming we're doing today. And um, perfect, okay. So this is, once again, so this is an online um, class. So at any point you wanna drop a message um, in the, the live chat, you can do. Um, it is Facebook, there is a slight delay. It's about a, let me just adjust that down a little bit. There is about a 10 second delay. So if you do say something, then it might take a little bit of time to come through to me um, to, to respond. Um, and additionally, it's on a computer screen here. So my attention is on the camera. Uh, so I may not look down on it, but feel free to say hello. Feel free to kind of question anything and those kinds of things. And if there's anything that needs to be touched upon in more detail, then I obviously can do that today. Brilliant. Okay, so we're starting in the chair first and foremost. And we're going to start at the bottom of the body. So all we're going to do with our toes um, is just draw big circles with the toes. And it's in any direction to start with because we are going to go both, time, uh, both ways around. I've got a child sticker on my foot. That's a brilliant start to the day. Um, okay, so nice big circle round in one direction. Um, and let's then go the opposite direction as well. Nice circles. And nice and controlled. And what I want you to really do through all of these motions is we'll take it over to the other foot now. So we just, we can keep the heel on the floor if that's uh, too challenging for the legs to keep it off the entire time. If you can keep the heel off the floor, that's sweet and like another extra kind of bit of challenge that you can put in there. What we're looking to do is that upper body. I want you to think about getting a good upper body posture. We'll start to take that foot the opposite direction now. So try not to slouch in a chair, try not to lean on it too heavily or anything like that. Try and really keep a good upper body posture. So you're pushing the shoulder blades into your back pockets. Shoulders are drawn back from there as well. Okay, so let's shuffle our bums forward in the seat. And what we're gonna do now is just draw circles with the knee, okay? So whatever that looks like for you today, you're just trying to draw a bigger circle with your knee as you can. So if that's a big knee up and round, then great. Try and do it without using the hand. If we've still got like the toe on the floor to do our knee circles, that's fine. Once again, like I say, it's however you feel comfortable today but we're on the edge of that seat and that circle is round and round. And let's go the opposite way as well. So whichever way you were going, if you're going out to in, you know, going in to out. And it's just nice, big, controlled circle. So like I say, I'm just gonna pull the camera down just a little bit more. But like I say, with these movements, what you wanna try and do as much as you can is control them. So not only are you controlling the up factor, but also that down factor. So we don't want to just let the leg flop to the floor. We're controlling it as it comes down as well. And we'll go ahead and do the same with the other leg now. So obviously the leg that we're not moving, it's nice and firm on the floor, heel underneath, that kind of thing. And we've still got that good posture sitting up right in the chair and it's just drawing that knee in the biggest circle that we can draw it. Bums on the edge of the seat. It's a little bit of a core engagement to support you with your kind of body position right now. There's lots going on. That core's engaging to keep you sat up nice and straight. Those shoulders are back and down. And then on top of that, we're trying to concentrate on drawing big circles with the knee. Let's go the opposite direction as well. Just as big as you're comfortable with. That's all we're looking for whilst we maintain that nice, big circle. Lovely stuff. Okay. So we're still bums on the edge of the seat, and we're just gonna start um, with knee raises next, okay? So whatever that looks like for you. Maybe we've got little kind of just up on the toes, little knee raises. Maybe we've got a slight little march on the spot. Maybe our range of motion is a little bit further. Whatever we're doing, what I want you to make, uh, make sure you're doing is controlling the descent, okay? I don't want you to pull it up as hard as you can and then just drop it to the floor. It's nice and controlled up 
and down. You almost want to see if you can get into kind of a rhythm of the same kind of time frame going up and down. So let's say we start with one second, one down, one up, one down. Maybe you start to got that and you're fine with that. Maybe go one, two up, one, two down. And so we start to get this nice rhythm involved throughout. One of the things that we want to do as much as we can, like I say, is to control the movements. So if we can get these rhythms in, if we, and that goes for any of the movements that we do today, if you can keep that rhythm going, the same to the end of the motion and then back to the middle, that's gonna pay dividends. So what I want you to try and do next is we're gonna go static with the feet and we're just gonna twist on the spot. One way and then the other, then back to the middle. To the left, to the right. And I want you to lead with the shoulder. So it's the shoulder which is drawing you round to one side. The shoulder. It's not you looking round to the side, it's the shoulder which is drawing round. If you can keep your head pointing straight forward between the shoulders the entire time, not moving that neck at all, that's great. And then what I'd like you to do is every time you take that turn to that side, you're led now by the elbows. So our elbows are high and we're just going round as far as we can each side. Once again, depending on what your range of motion is, depends on how far round you're going to go, that kind of thing. Lovely stuff. And we're going to stop there in the middle. Now, as our hands are up at shoulder height, let's just start to rotate them forward. Just big circles with the elbows. We drew circles with the feet. We drew circles with the knees. Now we're just doing it with the elbows. Nice big circles. Let's go big circles backwards as well. Just drawing as big a circle, nice and slow with the elbows as we get going. Once again, keeping that posture nice and back and down, shoulder blades in the back pocket, those kinds of things. And if, now here's the big challenge for you. So a lot of the things I like to do is kind of do two movements at once. You know, like the good old tapping the head and rubbing the belly situation. One of those is one arm forward and one arm back. So let's see how we do that. So big circles of the elbow, one forward and one back. If you're not laughing because of how awkward it is right now, that means you're an expert. And we'll go the other arm forward and the other arm back. Once again, as big a circle as you can do with that. Lovely stuff, okay. Next thing we're going to do, just nice big posture. We can either be bum right back in the seat or at the front. It's completely up to you. But we're just in a good stood up, uh, sat up position and we're just going to rock the head slightly to the side. We're not jerking the head around or anything like that. It's just a nice controlled movement from side to side. Don't force it past kind of where the range of motion is. Just a half moon at the front, same situation, nice and controlled. Don't drop the neck off the axis, you're in control at the entire time. And then at the back as well, the back half moon as well. Nice and controlled the entire time round. Good stuff. Okay, from the chair, once again, we're sat up straight. We're just going to fire one arm all the way over one way and then back. And then fire the other arm all the way over and back. Try and put your arm into your ear every single time. Through that motion, arm into ear. You may want to put your hand on the rest for a little bit of support to help push you back to the middle. You might be kind of happy just doing it normally without that extra little bit of support. But it's just taking each one as far as we can. Try and keep your butt cheeks on the, on the, uh, the seat itself. As you kind of reach over as much as you can each and every way. We're going to do three more of those. Lovely stuff. Okay, last thing we're going to do, feet all the way back, oh, sorry, sorry, 
bomb all the way at the end of the seat. And what we're looking to do now um, is create a motion with our legs that we're going to continue. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to keep them moving like this and then do some things with our upper body as well. So once again, we're doing two different things at once, trying to confuse the brain and everything like that. So just want steps with the feet. That's it. A step out and a step in. Whatever your range of motion is feeling like today. So if it's a little shuffle, it's a little shuffle. Just nice and controlled. If you've got something bigger, that's fine. But that's it. So we just want to keep those legs moving. So it's just a little shuffle. Okay. Taking that into account, the legs continue to move. And we're just going to take our right hand first. And bring it overhead keep the legs going we take the left hand take it to the left of our body posture is still there right hand facing forward left hand high keep multitasking right hand to the right left hand to the left left hand high Right hand forward, right hand high, left hand forward, both hands to the side, both hands up, and both hands on the knees. There we go, lovely stuff. Good stuff, all right. Let's get into it, shall we? So the way we're gonna work, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven movements and what we're going to do is we're going to spend 45 seconds doing a movement remember it's as many perfect reps as you can do for that movement within those 45 seconds then we're going to take a 90 second rest and then repeat with the next movement okay so let me just set the old stopwatch in between each round obviously i'll tell you exactly what we're going to do in the next one give you some details to look for those kinds of things First one we're going to do, we're going to start with this every single week, is the sit to stand. Okay, so we're basically taking ourselves from the seat up to a standing position where I lose my head on the video feed and then back down. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of variations involved in this that we can do depending on how you feel today. We've got arms on the chairs for support, so we can push ourselves up out of the seat as we go to the standing position and help bring ourselves back down again. Maybe we're only just going up as far as the arm's length, just raising that bum off the seat, that kind of thing. Either of those is perfectly fine today. Uh, obviously, we're pushing through the feet. So we're off, where our feet aren't moving, I want you to set the feet straight away so the feet are in line with your hips. Your toes are facing forward as best you can. So we've got all of the legs moving in one beautiful unison movement. And then it's just kind of leaning onto the feet. So our feet have got all the way and then we're coming up, whether it's just the bum off the seat or whether we go to the full standing position. OK, obviously, if you really want to challenge yourself and you're at the top end of that scale and you want to take it a little bit further, try doing it with your arms crossed as well. So you're not using anything to get yourself out from there. OK, so various levels. And like I say, we're going 45 seconds worth of work. 90 seconds rest okay here we go first round three two one and we're off so like i say it's all about how you feel today now what i would recommend is if you're using your arms on that chair okay get a good firm plant of those hands under the elbows okay and really kind of pushing with the feet and the arms at the same time and remember like we mentioned earlier it's just as much about the return visit to the seat as it is taking ourselves out. Okay, so there we go. So we're pushing on up to full extension, finishing through with the hips from there. 10 seconds to go, nice and controlled. Maybe you're timing it up and down through the same kind of process we looked at earlier. Brilliant, first round done. Okay, so the next movement we're gonna look to do is uh, punches from the seat, okay? Um, we're going to combine punches forward, side and above in a little rotation of all of them. OK, so we've really got to think about our pattern, think about the different processes as we're doing it. 
Bums in the back of the seat, bums at the front of the seat, whatever you prefer. Just make sure we've got contact with the floor and we're engaging those feet as part of our foundation. Once again, just like when we were getting in and out of the seat, feet in line with our hips and we're trying to keep our knees nice and controlled. So don't let them co uh, collapse in or out or anything like that. Keep them engaged the entire time. Upper body posture as well. Super key, try and keep those shoulders back and down. Like you're in primary school and your teacher's told you to sit up straight, those kinds of things. And here's how we go. We take two punches forward, two punches to the side, two overhead. So we get our, our fists out, or our hands, if you're a pacifist, whatever you want to do. And it's one, two forward, one, two to the side, and then one, two up. So every time it's a return, a return, a return, just like that. So we've got three different directions for each of our arms to go. Back to back as we go, 45 seconds, okay? Here we go, three, two, and we're off. So it's a forward, forward, side, side, and then up, and then up. And then back to the beginning. What you want to try and do as much as you can is keep those uh, palms or the fists, whatever you're leading with, in line with your shoulders. So when you're coming out to the side or up above, fire along that shoulder line. Same as when you're coming forward. Just fire along the shoulder line so you get to full extension or as close as you can get today with each one. And when you get to that full, oh, I've gone wrong, that full extension, your arm is almost like in a straight line. We've got five seconds to go. Three. Oh, we're done. Not even three, two, one. We're done. Good stuff. Okay. And the next one we're going to do is a little bit more energetic. And there are two parts. Okay. You can pick either of the parts to do. Or if you're really up for the challenge, maybe you do both at the same time. Okay. So we're essentially doing jumping jacks from the seat. So I'm going to need, uh, you're going to need to bring your bum um, right to the edge of your seat, okay? Got our weight through our bums, those kinds of things to take the weight off. So the two parts I'm talking about is one part with the legs and one part with the arms. So nice and easy, good posture as always. So part one with the arms, out to the kind of almost like an X position and then back into the chest. There's one. Second part that we can do we want to concentrate on just the legs today is we do the same thing with the legs so we go from the seated straight legs back to the seated straight legs back to the seat and then at the top end of that if you want to challenge yourself by doing both the availability of that challenge is there and it's just both at the same time and then back both at the same time and back we can shuffle the legs slide the legs out those kinds of things pick the legs up will be super challenging as well. So that's what you've got. You've got the two halves, just the arms, just the legs, or both. And we've got 45 seconds in three, two, one, and we're off. So remember, it's about your comfort level today and how you feel, okay? So if we're just with the arms, that's fine, because there's plenty going on with the arms. The arms are doing work. We've also got to maintain that core position to control that seated situation that we're in. Just the legs, boom, big extension, back to the middle. Once again, core stabilizing that upper body, sitting up straight. Maybe you've got both in the same position, boom. And your kind of range of motion may look different to mine. Maybe you are able to go wide to the side, maybe you're straight ahead, but it's just a full extension of both, and then back to the middle. Two, one, lovely stuff. Okay. Next one we got. Um, we're going to need to be, once again, um, we can be in the bums at the back of the seat. That's fine if you want a little bit more security. Or you can be kind of still on the edge of your seat. And we're looking to do um, some raises with the knees. Now, we did a little bit of kind of stepping and a little bit of side stepping during the warm-ups. But we're really looking to control this a little bit more now. So, either. Um, all movements require good of a body posture, those kinds of things. So we're either looking for controlled knee raises, okay? And when I say controlled, that means not only are we coming up at nice speed, but there's a pause at the top, and then a slow 
release back down to the floor. So we've got the knee raises, or alternatively, a whole leg raise. So we're trying to just kick a leg straight out in front and then back, okay? So if we've got the knee raises and we're comfortable with the knee raises, we can go into the leg extension, so the foot's going forward and back. If you're really looking uh, for that next level, you can do a bit of both, a knee raise, then a leg extension, and then back, okay? So we've got those three levels, but like I say, the important thing I want you to concentrate on is taking whichever of the three that you're using through the biggest range of motion you can take it, holding it, and then slowly releasing it to the floor. Okay, so 45 seconds in three, two, one, and we're off. So once again, upper body posture is super key. If you've got arms in a, in a perfect position like I have on my chair, you can just rest your forearms on there, engage the forearms with the arms of the chair to help support that upper body posture. If you take the arms away, if you are doing that, you're bringing more work to the core because obviously you're freestanding right now. So once again, controlling the knees maybe we're on the leg extension and once again it's as straight as you can do it okay you only may be able to kick it out about to 45 degrees those kinds of things but whichever is the end of your range of motion is a slight pause and then a slow return back from there last one good stuff all right 90 seconds rest Couple of uh, changes on the neck, a couple of um, different versions of the next one we can do. We can either do it seated, we can either do it stood up, or if you're by a, a surface, you can do it there as well. It's going to be whatever is preferable for you today. And we did this last week, and it's another one that we'll continue to do week on week so we can see the progression, so we can keep confident with it, those kinds of things. And it's going to be the side lunge or the side step. Okay, so we want to be on the edge of our seats for this one. Uh, if you're staying into the, uh, the chair itself, what I'm going to ask you to do is you're just going to take a bigger step as you can out to one side. Once you're there, you're just going to shift your balance over to that leg and then back again. And then bring your leg back in and then take a step out to the other side. Move your weight over there again. Move it back to seated and move the leg back. Okay. Over to that leg and then back. Okay, great. There's one if we're in the seat. If we want to try this from standing, and you have to forgive my head disappearing right now, um, we can do it from behind the chair. Okay, so you can just hold onto the chair and you can take a side step, move your balance over it, and then come on back to the chair. That works. Alternatively, if you've got a work surface or something like that that you can lean on over, put the weight on, it's the same thing. You can take a step out wide, shift your weight over onto it, shift your weight back to the middle, bring the foot back in, okay? Whatever your preferred method is today, we've got 45 seconds in three, two, one, and we're off. So it's just about a step, changing our center of balance, bringing it back, foot back in. Foot out, changing that centre of balance and bringing it back in. So we've almost got um, like a modified, if we're in the seat, it's almost like a modified good morning. Okay, what's happening is we're working into the hamstring, using our core, because we're obviously keeping that body position nice and flat throughout, to move us through a hip hinge and then back up. And if you're up, we've got a little bit more work in the legs if you're stood up here, shifting over in those side lung situations. Three, two, one, good stuff. Okay. Next one, once again, we've got two versions. Um, we can do it from the chair. We can do it from um, standing as well. And we're just gonna do calf raises. Big, beautiful pushing muscles at the back, backs of our shins. From the chair. Feet under knees, good body posture, pushing up through the feet, raising the heels as high as you can, and then releasing them back down to the ground. Once again, we're fully controlled. We're not allowing them just to flop down at the end of our range of motion, and we're trying to hold it at the peak range of motion. 
Either way, um, we do it from our uh, chair or from the surface. We're just using it for a little bit of balance stood up for those heel raises. Maybe you're bent over the surface, that kind of thing. Up onto the toes and then back down. You may also want to um, do it single leg instead. So doing it single leg, especially if you're doing it stood up, is going to make it much more challenging for you. Okay? Because you're carrying more of your body weight through one leg rather than two. Okay, so we've got lots of different challenge levels there. Same in the seat. If you want to do it with one leg, concentrate on one leg at a time. But it's the calf raise, it's keeping the balls of your foot on the floor whilst pushing those heels as high as you can go. Okay, 45 seconds in three, two, one. Let's go. Nice and controlled. That's what we're looking for though. Good rhythm throughout. Couple up, hold, couple down. And with the calves, you'll feel quite quickly when they get to the end of their range of motion because there is almost like a, 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 I won't say sharp pain, but they certainly let you know when they're at their end of their range of motion. And especially if you hold it for a second and bring it back down, you can really feel it in those calves. Just about halfway done now. And remember, if you're in the seat, you've still got that wonderful body posture. Those shoulders are firing down into your back pockets, those kinds of things. Maybe we're up on the surface, big heel raise, then back down. Two seconds, one second, lovely stuff. Okay. Last one we've got for you um, today, and then we're going to repeat all of our movements one more time. It's just the bog standard forward fold. Okay, so what I like on this one is we're going to either bum all the way back in the seat or once again at the edge. But I'm going to ask you to bring your knees and bring your feet together. And what I want you to do is keep those shoulders drawn back. And I just want you to forward fold and keep looking up at the distance. OK, we're trying to maintain a flat back as much as we can and then back up. OK, so we're forward folding as far as you can go and then back up. We're not kind of bending the upper back and folding all the way down. One of the things you can do, especially if you're at the edge of your seat doing this, is if you draw your hands behind the back, okay, either holding your elbows or something like that, that is going to kind of almost force your back into the right position and won't allow you to break it too much. So you can kind of forward fold and back up from there, okay? So that's what we're looking to do, is just a bog standard forward fold. If you want to take it a step further, do it with your arms directly up overhead. But what I want you to do is concentrate on it. As soon as you feel like your back starts to round, that's the end of your range of motion. And I want you to take it back up to the beginning, okay? So it's just a forward fold as much as you can do. And then back up. Try not use your hands to push yourself up. Let's see if we can get that core engaged to hold, uh, sorry, to pull us back up. Okay, 45 seconds, three, two, one, off we go. So it's keying on the looking up the entire time. OK, as your body falls forward, keep your eyes on exactly the same position, whether you're looking at something on the wall, whether you're looking at something in the video or anything else. In fact, just keep your gaze on the same point. Keep think thinking about those shoulders back, those shoulder blades in your back pocket throughout the movement. Good work. Maybe you're at the edge of the seat, you've got those arms behind the back just for kind of that ever, extra kind of extenuation of that kind of back position. Three, two, there we go, lovely stuff. All right, good stuff. So those are our seven movements on the day. And we're going to revisit each one of them um, one more time. And then we will kind of have a warm down from there. So one of the things I would like you to do um, on this one then um, is this time rather than um, 45 seconds work with the 90 rest, we're going to do 30 seconds of work this time with uh, 60 seconds rest in between. Okay. Um, so what that ends up being is just a little bit less time. However, it doesn't diminish the fact that we want the same 
posture, the same movement, all those kind of things, okay? It's all about control. It's all about uh, taking the time to do the movement correct through the range of motion rather than rushing it to kind of fit in more reps and those kind of things, okay? So, exactly the same situation, exactly the same seven different movements, okay? Key is always this upper body posture, that's what we're looking to do. Okay, first one remember is that sit to stand, so we're either um, standing straight up with no support, maybe we're using support on the arms, arms, elbows tucked in, pushing with the feet and with the arms as we launch off and bring ourselves down. And maybe we're just bum up, bum down, okay? We're doing as much as we can through that range of motion today. The more we do, the more confident, the more uh, our brains get used to the motion through all those kinds of things, okay? So we go 30 seconds work, three, two, one, and off we go. So nice, good control. Remember, pushing through your legs. Your legs are the big work muscles here. The arms are there to stabilize and give a little bit of support, but really kind of get your weight over the feet and make sure it's the feet which are really pushing. You know, we spend all our time on our feet through our lives. We develop those muscles to push. So let's get them through that firing motion as well. As we're getting up, we're squeezing the butt cheeks together to get us to stand up straight. There we go. Nice, controlled movement. Okay, second movement, if you remember, is going to be the punches. So we've got the forward punch, the side punch, and then the overhead punch as well. In that kind of order, one, two, one, two, one. Two, and you're kind of trying to get that arm going through the same line so when it gets the full extension, it is in line with that shoulder, regardless of whichever way it is. Okay? Um, six different ones, we're going for 30 seconds, remember. In three, two, one, and we're off. So it's forward, back, forward, back, side, side, and then above. There we go. Okay. Back to the beginning, nice and slow, nice and controlled. We're sitting up straight, we're supporting the posture of our body throughout this. Last five seconds or so, maybe you just finish one more round. Up, up, lovely stuff. There we go, that's our 30 seconds. Next we've got those modified jumping jacks. So remember you're either just doing the arms or just doing the legs. So we've got our arms, so we're sat on the edge of that seat. Just the arms, boom. Straight out diagonally from the body. Those shoulders aren't coming up towards the ears, they're still relaxed and down, it's just the arms coming up. We've got the legs, once again, just extending the legs as necessary, whether we're sliding them or we're stepping them, okay? Make sure you've got that space, there's no cats zooming around or anything like that or you're doing both at the same time, okay? Whichever is your preferred method today, whatever is challenging to you today, okay? We have 30 seconds in three, two, one, and we are off, boom. And once again, depending on how far out of your seat you are, depends on what your range of motion is gonna be with those legs. You may just be going straight forward with the legs, just a big extension shuffling along the floor, those kinds of things. But we are trying to sit up. We're not kind of falling back in the seat and then coming back up, okay? We are trying to keep that body posture as much as we can. Two, one, that's our sit, uh, 30 seconds, good stuff. We've got that leg or that knee extension next. So remember, this is about the hold at the end of the range of motion. So if we are doing knee raises, it is that knee up, Hold, knee down. So it's that kind of pause in the middle. Good routine, whether it's a one second, two second hold, those kinds of things. So you could turn each different one into a three second movement, into a six second movement, those kinds of things. One, two, hold, one, two, back down, one, two. 
that kind of thing. Or we've got the leg extension, so we're just kicking the foot out, showing the soles of our feet to the wall, that kind of thing. Or you're mixing them both up, knee high, part out, sole out, and then return to the middle. Supporting the upper body again, posture is set for 30 seconds. Three, two, one, and we're up. Nice and controlled, nice and slow. Good range of motion going throughout each and every single one. Really clamping down on that core, especially when you get to the end of these range of motions because of what it's doing to your hamstrings. You may find it kind of uh, almost adjust what your pelvis wants to do depending on how tight things are and all those kinds of things. Two, one, lovely stuff. Okay, we got those side steps, that change of center of balance, kind of fold situation going on. So if we're in the seat, remember bums on the edge of our seat for this one. It's a big step or as big as you can take it today. Then we're bringing our shift and our focus on over. And then we go out to the other side, boom, forward and fold over there. If we're doing it from kind of over the chair or a surface, taking a step to the side, shifting our, our weight on over, those kinds of things, okay? Whatever your preferred kind of motion is, it's kind of a movement to the side, followed by a, a kind of a shift on your center of balance and then bringing ourselves back to the center. That's what we're looking to do, okay? So we have 30 seconds in three, two, one, and off we go. So once again, it's just about challenging your body through the biggest range of motion today. Nice and controlled as we go on through. Trying to get that good rhythm in. So if we're looking two seconds down and it's two seconds back up, etc. Almost through five seconds. Possibly your last one now. Good stuff, okay. Two more to go, we got the, oh, excuse me. Oh. We've got the calf raises and then we've got the forward fold. So remember the calf, uh, calf raises, either from the seat or stood up, okay? All you're doing is keeping the balls of your feet on the floor and it's a high raise on those heels and then all the way back down. High raise all the way back down. Trying to keep those knees in line with the toes, not letting them collapse in on each other or go too wide or anything like that. Um, and then obviously if you're doing the same from standing, you're leaning over onto your support, maybe you're on the work surface in the kitchen or something like that that you can do. And it's just kind of the same situation up onto the balls of the feet heels high and then back down. Remember, we're getting that hold about halfway through as well. All right, so 30 seconds, three, two, one, and we're off. This is one of those ones that you, I, in my eyes, the calves are one of those ones that you can really feel quite easily as soon as you've got the movements going. And especially when you start to do multiple sets within the calves, you can really feel the fatigue setting in on them. 20 done, we got 10 left to go. Nice and controlled, and like I said many times before, control the descent as well. Don't just drop off, nice and easy. There it is, good. Okay, and then our last one is that forward fold motion. Remember, we're keeping the shoulder blades back and down. Good posture. And we keep, sorry, we're keeping our eyes up as well. I forgot that one. Keeping our eyes up the entire time. Looking on up, coming back up. Bombs on the edge of the seats. If you want to make it a little bit more challenging throughout the motion, those arms up, but you're keeping your eye on something in the future, in, in front of you, sorry. And remember, those shoulders back and down. We're trying to keep that flat back situation. As soon as you feel the collapse of the, the core, of the trunk of your body. That's the end of your range of motion. We want to keep it and then back up. Okay, keep it and then back up. Using our core to pull us back up, those kinds of things. All right, final 30 seconds, three, two, one, and off we go. 
As with the last round, maybe you're even keeping your hands behind your back and pulling your arms together so that your shoulder blades are squishing, which keeps that back in that good position as you're folding forward. But it's just as far as your range of motion is letting you go. Forward fold, bringing ourselves back to the seated position. So don't just come up halfway, really coming up to that full back, nice flat back, uh, seated position like you're in assembly from there. Two, one, done. Good stuff. All right, that is our two rounds. That is our seven exercises today. Cheers for that. So we're just going to finish off with a little bit of stretching. Um, all from the seat, because uh, it's nice and easy to do in the seat. And I'm a big fan of stretching in the seat, as I've said many times before. All right, first and foremost, what we're going to do is um, we're going to just take our feet. Uh, we're sit, sat right back in the seat. Just take your feet as wide as you can possibly take them. Um, feet are still under your knees. And I, this time I want you to reach down and touch the floor or as far as you can get there. Okay. Nice and controlled. If you can get there with great ease, you can start to try and get your elbows towards the floor, that kind of thing. Nice and controlled though. We're not pushing ourselves through. We're just letting gravity take us. We're not using our arms to frame us or anything like that. And then we come back up. Okay. Then we just bring our legs just slightly further forward. So they're on their heels and they're no longer on our knees. And we just repeat the process. Okay. Try and maintain that space between them. We're just getting it on the hamstrings just that little bit more. And then back up we come again. And now if you can, let's really just straighten the legs. You might want to come to the edge of your chair for this one. Straighten the legs. Once again, the heels are on the floor and you do exactly the same thing. So as we go, one of the things you may notice if you're like me, is your range of motion through those three different positions will have gradually changed. And you'll gradually feel the stretch on the hamstring more and more as you go through. And then back up. Good stuff. Okay. We're going to bring our legs uh, together and just cross them one over the other. And this time, whichever knee, uh, sorry, whichever ankle is on top, take the opposite hand and pop it on that knee. OK, so if your right leg is over your left leg, then you're going to take your left arm complex uh, onto the knee and you're just going to push yourself round that way. So you can use the back of the chair to help pull you round. You can use the hand on the knee to push you round from there. It's a cross and we're going stretching round to the way where the ankle is on top. And then let's go ahead and bring it back to the middle and just do the opposite. So you cross the leg the other way. Once again, whichever ankle is on top, you're going to take the opposite hand over onto that knee and push on round. Maybe grab the chair and pull us round a little bit more. And then we can go back to the middle again. Okay. Bottoms in the back of your seat, if you want to go ahead and try, bring one leg up onto the chair, whichever one you prefer at this stage, and then all I'm going to ask you to do is posture up and pull that leg as close to the body as you can, that's it, okay? You can almost kind of hug the knee, if you wish, that kind of situation, but we're just looking to bring it up and as close to the body as you can. Don't kind of lean into it. Don't use it as a rest or anything like that. Keep it, posture up and pull it on into there. And then we're going to drop that one back to the floor. And then the same with the other leg. Bring it on up to the chair, trying to get that heel as close to the bum as possible and just hug it on into a good assembly-like posture.
and uh, we'll put it back down again and um, we'll sit back in the chair and take the hands behind our back behind the chair link the hands just push them down and away from your shoulder blades and although this is a stretch and it's an exaggerated version of it this is the kind of feeling i want you to think about next time that we do kind of any motions when i talk about posture this shoulder blades down towards our back pockets is exactly what we want to be working towards. And we'll go ahead and just bring one hand across the body as far as we can. Once our range of motion has been met, then we just hug it on into the body. We don't need to twist from side to side. It literally is just as easy as that tracking along our shoulder level and then hugging it into the body. And then obviously we've done it on one side, so let's do it on the other across that shoulder level. Hug it on in from there. Great stuff. Okay, that's about it for today. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for coming along. Leave us a like on the video or a comment or something like that. Let us know you've been here. If there's anything you'd like to see more of, um, if there's something in your programming or something like that that you're doing that you think would be more beneficial if we did it in the class, great. Let me know. Chances are if it's something that works for you and it will help you, it's going to help other people in the same situation as well. The video is uploaded to YouTube. Um, it is on the Facebook page for a while as well, um, so it's uh, completely available for you to do historically as well, as will every other class that we do. This is week three right now, um, so that means all three, um, or the last two are already up on YouTube, um, but this third one will be up as well. So not only can you do this one live today or you know, at a different time if that works for you, but also what you can do is you can do multiple different ones a week should you have the energy levels should you be able to those kinds of things because the more consistent you are with the movements with getting through different various movement patterns and those kinds of things the more confidence you're going to build up which is super important and it's also super important for the brain to keep doing these things and to training them as well so the option is there to do multiple ones as well um, but that's about it um, Thanks for turning up today. I uh, hope you had a good workout and um, I will, well, I won't see you, uh, but the class will be on the same time next week. So have a good week. Um, looks like the sun's just come out as well. Um, but before we go, last high five before we go.